In this class, we are going to see how to plot Andersonian conjugate strike slip faults in stereo net and to find out the principal stress axis sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3. We are considering sigma 1 more than equal to sigma 2 more than equal to sigma 3 and we are ignoring the one very special case sigma 1 equal to sigma 2 equal to sigma 3 this is being negated. In the green board, I have already explained to you the conjugate strike slip faults and here the actual st stereo net plotting will be done. Consider this given diagram that there are two red planes which are vertical and they are intersecting. We can easily understand if two vertical planes intersect then their line of intersection will be a vertical line and that is being shown. And in this case sigma 2 is the principal stress axis which is vertical, the intersection between the two vertical fault planes. As per Andersonian conjugate strike slip fault mechanism, the conjugate strike slip faults do not form orthogonal to each other, rather they maintain an acute angle and an obtuse angle. And that I am showing in this diagram, this is the acute angle and here is the obtuse angle. The bisector of the acute angle is this sigma 3 principal stress axis which is horizontal and the bisector of this obtuse angle is the sigma 1 principal stress axis which is also horizontal and all the principal stress axis are perpendicular to each other, sigma 1 is perpendicular to sigma 2, sigma 2 is perpendicular to sigma 3. Sigma 2 is vertical, sigma 1 and sigma 3 in this case are horizontal. Consider that this out of these two fault planes, okay, we are calling this one as the plane 1 and this plane as the plane 2. For fault plane 1, the data is like this, the strike shown by S dash is north south. That means this geographic direction can be either north or south. Accordingly, this direction will be either south or north. The deep amount has to be 90 degree as per the Andersonian conjugate strike slip falls. And the deep direction is undefined because if the plane is vertical, it is not dipping in any geographic direction. So, the deep direction I have given a dash here. Now, look at the questions. Suppose fault plane 2 makes 40 degree angle with fault plane 1. That means I am talking about this acute angle, this angle is 40 degree. Now what are the questions asked? Plot FP1 and FP2, the two fault planes stereographically. Plot their poles, poles of FP1 and FP2 and then plot sigma 1, sigma 2 and the sigma 3 principal stress axis. So, that was given and this is to be found out. We will do the problem slowly, I can do it fast but that will not serve the purpose. From this given data, I need to understand the attitude of FP2. Since FP1 and FP2 are both vertical, as per the Andersonian model, so the dip has to be 90 degree. For a vertical plane, there is no dip direction. So, I put a dash here, it is undefined. And what would be the strike? With a north-south striking plane, suppose another vertical plane makes 40 degree angle, there are two possible orientations of FP2. In one possibility, it will be north, that means 0 degree plus 40 degree will be 40 degree and then dash then 180 degree plus 40 degree which is 220 degree. Now suppose this 40 degree angle is made in a different way. 
So, the second possibility is that the fault plane 2 can have a stripe north which is 360 degree minus 40 degree. How much is that? So, the strike can be 320 degree. The dip in that case remains 90 degree as usual dip direction is undefined. So, we have two possibilities I can call it F p 2 a one possibility and this as F p 2 b two possible cases I have to draw and in those two possible cases the poles can be drawn the principal stress axis can also be drawn. Now, let us plot F p 1 for which the attitude data was given. This is the data strike is north south north south are already marked. So, I can call it S dash these are the strike of F p 1 F p 1. Okay. Next the plane dips 90 degree. So, a plane which is vertical passes through the center and that is the strike. So, I can draw a straight line this is F p 1 fault plane 1 has been drawn. Now, I take the attitude of F p 2 a, F p 2 a is one possibility of F p 2, F p 2 b is another possibility of F p 2. For F p 2 a the strike is 40 degree to 20 degree. So, let us mark the strike on the periphery of the stereo net on the tracing sheet 10, 20, 30, 40. This is 40 degree, this is the S dash of F p 2 a. If 40 degree is one possible strike direction, the other will be 40 degree plus 180 degree which is 220 degree. This is 90 degree, this is 180 degree, this is 190 degree, 200, 210 and this is 220 degree, this is S dash of F p 2 a. And note as per my information the dip is 90 degree that is considered in case of Andersonian strike slip falls both are vertical. So, dip is 90 degree how that will be plotted? I have to draw a straight line joining this point center and that. So, these are done. Now, I am going back north of the tracing sheet matches with the north of what is marked in the Schmidt net. So, here this angle 10, 20, 30, 40, this angle is 40 degree and I have plotted F p 2 if you want to see this without the tracing without the stereo net I can remove you can have a more clear cut view what has happened F p 1 and F p 2 have been plotted. Next F p 2 a basically now we want to plot the pole of F p 1 and F p 2 a. So, what to do? This is F p 1 from here I move 90 degree and basically reach this east point and this is my pole p 1 which is the pole of F p 1 and this is also found over there. This is west point over here is also p 1 point pole. Since F p 1 is a vertical plane its pole which is an imaginary line which is perpendicular to the vertical plane this becomes a horizontal line. A horizontal line is represented at two peripheries. A horizontal line is plotted as two points on the peripheries 180 degree apart from each other. So, this P 1 represents and this P 1 represents the pole of F P 1. Now, let us look at how to plot the pole of F p 2 a. 
to do that I can move this tracing sheet so that this 40 degree goes to the geographic north of the stereo net. Once this 40 degree point moves there, 220 degree point will move in this side. Let me show once again. Once this 40 degree point is moved in this direction, maintaining the center of the stereo net and the center of the tracing sheet to be fixed this point goes there then this 220 degree point will superpose with south. Have a look at it I am rotating first I rotated then 40 degree is matched with north of stereo net and here therefore 220 comes to the south. Now from this point I have to move 90 degree in one side. and 90 degree in the another side and that touches the periphery. This I can now go back again north matches with north. This is I can call as the P to A which is the pole of fault plane to A. This is also plotted over here. P to A is the pole of plane to A. Now we are going to see how to plot the principal stress axis sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 and for that we will recollect how the sigma 1, 2, 3 are oriented. So basically I am considering FP1 and FP2A right now. Later I will consider FP1 and FP2B to see the second possibility. So here sigma 2 is a vertical line and we know that vertical lines are plotted at the center of the stereo net. So therefore I can say that this is the sigma 2 principal stress axis. For that I need not have drawn FP2 straight away since it is Andersonian conjugate strike slip fault I can understand sigma 2 is the center. Next is I have to see how the sigma 1 and sigma 3 are oriented. Sigma 3 is the acute bisector of the angle between plane 1 and plane 2. Plane 1 has a strike shown by this red line which I have extended now. Plane 2 has a strike which is shown by this red line. These two strikes are making an acute angle and its acute bisector is a sigma 3. So where is the acute bisector in this case? That acute bisector sigma 3 is also a horizontal line. We know that as per the data this is 10, 20, 30, 40. So in between this is 20 degree I mean to say this is 20 degree and that is your 20 degree and this plot becomes your sigma 3 principal stress axis. Where else it is located on the stereo net this is 10, 20, 30, 40. So in between 10, 20 this point represents your sigma 3 principal stress axis. Since sigma 3 principal stress axis is a horizontal line therefore it should plot at two places within the stereo net and on the periphery that has been shown. So I can mark here this angle is your 20 degree and that angle is 20 degree. So in this way the sigma 3 has been plotted the next point is we have to plot the sigma 1 how the sigma 1 is oriented have a look. The sigma 1 is the bisector of the obtuse angle. Sigma 1 is the bisector of the obtuse angle made by the strike lines of plane 2 and plane 1. So let us look at it. This was acute angle 40 degree and the bisection has been made. This is the obtuse, these are the obtuse angles they have to be bisected. So how much is this angle from here to there? We can count from here north to west is 90 degree and then 100, 110, 120, 130 and 140. So this angle is 140 degree by symmetry I know this angle is also 140 degree. 
Now bisector of 140 degree will be 70, so which I can count from here 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and this is the point. So, let me use the red pen. This is 70 degree angle and this is again you see 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and 70 degree angle. So, this point is the sigma 1 principal stress axis where else it is located sigma 1 is a horizontal line. So, it plots on the periphery and it has to have another plot over here. So, I can join this point the center and extend the line I will reach alternately I have to move 70 degree angle from this strike. So, I let me do that 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and 70 and this is the sigma 1. So, in this way we have plotted the sigma 2, sigma 1 and sigma 3 principal stress axis. This was the second possibility that the strike was not 40 degree for FP 2 B case the strike can be 320 degree. Deep remains 90 and deep direction is not defined since the plane is vertical. Now we are going to plot basically in a fresh tracing sheet FP 2 B. Then we will plot their poles FP 1's poles and FP 2 B's poles and we will also plot the sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 principal stress axis from FP after plotting FP 1 and FP 2 B. Now we are going to plot first of all FP 1 which is having a north south strike and which is dipping at 90 degree. So, as usual I have drawn this line this time I am doing faster because this was already drawn and this is my FP1 and I have already shown that from here I can move 90 degree calling it the P1 pole and here that is the P1 pole. Now instead of moving 40 degree in this direction and drawing I have to move 40 degree in that direction so that P2B situation FP2B situation can be understood. So here 10, 20, 30 and 40 this is the strike and from here I have to move 40 degree 10, 20, 30 and 40 degree is moved. So basically this angle is 40 degree here this angle is 40 degree remember in the previous situation we moved 40 degree this side to find one possibility here we are looking for the other possibility. Now FP 2 B fault plane passes through these two points and also through the center why through the center because it is a vertical plane. So, I have oriented a stash point matching with north and south. Now, I move back what I have drawn now is FP to B. Now, what are the orientations of the principal stress axis? Let us come straight away into it. Again recollect the diagram. Sigma 2 is a vertical axis and we know that the vertical axis is plotted at the center of the stereo net. So, here it is sigma 2. So, this is same as our previous case of dealing with FP1 and FP2A. Now, after sigma 2 is being plotted, let us look at sigma 3 which is the acute bisector of the strike between two fault planes. This is a 40 degree angle between the two strike lines of the two vertical fault planes. So, their bisector will have a trend of 10, 20 and I stop that means I break the 40 degree angle to 20 degree here and 20 degree there. Similarly, here, here we move 20 degree 10 and 20. So, what it means this angle is 20 degree and that angle is 20 degree. So, what point we have got that acute bisector is our sigma 3 principal stress axis. Okay. Sigma 3 is plotted since sigma 3 is a horizontal line. So, there are two plots on the periphery of the stereo net. Now, we are going to plot the sigma 1 which is a bisector of the obtuse angle. This is the 
obtuse angle and we need its bisector. How much is the total angle? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130 and 140. So, I have to move 70 degree from here 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and 70 degree. This point will be marked as sigma 1 principal stress axis. But since sigma 1 is a horizontal line as per Andersonian's theory for the conjugate strike slip vertical fault planes, sigma 1 must have a plot in the other side of the periphery. How to do? And where is that obtuse angle? It is from here up to here. Where I am putting the arrow that is the end here up to there. How much is this? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130 and 140. So, the half of 140 is 70 degrees. So, I move here 70, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and 70. That means, this angle I have taken as 70 degree and this portion is 70 degree. So, what is that point I have obtained on the periphery? This is, so this is my sigma 1 point. So, you can see sigma 1 over here and there and then the sigma 3 points over there and sigma 2 is at the center. Now, if I want to see it removing the studio net, this is the situation. In case of we dealt with FP1 and FP2B, the principal stress axis orientation have been demonstrated.